As you know, on Sunday night or Monday morning of every week, we post a new expository semiotics explaining why we would choose which lectionary readings. But in these readings, our dream is and our, our desire is to help you read the signs and fondle the details and spot the seminal metaphors, the condensed signs and the stories that are key for preaching to a digital culture. So strap on your seatbelt and join us as we prospect our passages for today. Happy New Year 2022. What a great auspicious beginning we have here at Orcas Island. It is snowing and it is just white. We had a white Christmas yesterday and um, so we greet you in the full splendor of a winter wonderland here we're a place where you're never supposed to see snow but <laughs> this is christmas is the time when the impossible becomes possible and so christmas tide christmas new year i want to begin having a little fun i want to give you 11 reasons to smile in the new year in 2022 so are you ready? Uh, these are just ones that um, came to mind. Number 11, you get a totally new surface skin every month, which means you have 12 chances in 2022 to get rid of some of those blotches and barnacles in your body that accumulate over the years. In, put another way, you have about 1,000 different skins in your lifetime, and you're going to get another one in the next month. So 11 reasons to smile. Number 10, every seven minutes of every day, someone working out and sweating in some exercise class or gym will pull a hamstring. So you now have a reason <laughs> to play it safe in 2022. Number nine, stay away from those places. Number nine, billionaires and trillionaires, really rich people, will be much more likely to be thrown overboard their yachts. Number eight, your car mechanics cars will break down too. Number seven, if you are a problem six-year-old, your first grade teacher has probably forgotten your name by now. Number six, thin people will continue to be less happy than fat people. Nothing will change. Number five, you ready for this? Cheese, 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 and cheesecake. Cheesecake, cheesecake, and if you like your cheesecake in layers, fat, uh, uh, yeah, pie cake and pie cake and pie cake and the that's number seven. All three go. I mean, number five. All three go together. Number four. Everyone you know will be naked at least once a day. Number three. Betty White is still alive and well in California. Number two. Choose favorites from number four. And number one, the number one reason to smile this year, you have a full year of Len Talks to look forward to. And I can't thank you enough for your support in 2021. And I am so looking forward to 2022. Our lectionary passages for the 2nd of January, um, the second Sunday after Christmas Day. First of all, we begin with Jeremiah 31. Save, O Lord, your people. Um, their life shall become as a watered garden. And this is the great classic, you, God turns our mourning into, into joy. Uh, Psalm 147, 12 to 20. Then there's Ephesians 1, 3 to 14, where God blessed us, God graced us, God chose us, and we it was god's good pleasure i love that phrase it, it's my pleasure it's god's good pleasure to bring us to to the mystery of his will um, in him you also this is verse 13 in him you also when you heard the word of truth were marked with the seal of the promised holy spirit notice you had to hear it and then you had to believe it and then the spirit uh, was yours 
And then there is this, the great passage, um, and you can do the first, uh, verse 10 to 18, or the first 18 verses. I do the first 18 verses. Is there anything more special than a mother-daughter, father-son project, where you just do it together, and you do the whole project together? And here we have, in John 1, in the beginning was the word, logos. David Bentley Hart, one of the really great theologians alive today, in his, trans, his literal translation of the New Testament, does not translate this into English because he says it's untranslatable. So, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, okay? which means there's not just one, there's two. It's a father-son project, and the Logos was God. Uh, nothing that was made was made without him. And so, here you have the, the story this is John's birth story, his nativity seed, if you will, uh, because the incarnation really begins with the creation of the universe. It's an ongoing incarnation. And then we have this big Bethlehem bombshell that we celebrated last, last week. Um, I, I, I wanna, there's a, there's a new book out on um, Niels Bohr uh, who some call the high priest of quantum mechanics. And he, he gave, he was so special that actually Albert Einstein said the only reason he went to work at Princeton was so he could walk home and talk quantum theory with Niels Bohr. But um, he gave a lecture on quantum physics and the new way of thinking of light as both wave and particle. Um, it's in the nature of the universe to, to just revel in paradox. We are both wave and particle. We are both saint and sinner. Um, Jesus is both divine and human. Humans can't be human without the divine. I could go on and on. But he was giving it to a group of philosophers. And when he was done, they smiled and nodded in approval and kind of clapped. And Bohr got upset. He, he got really furious, and he challenged them for being so passive and acquiescent and not engaging and not objecting. And this is what he said. If you do not feel dizzy when you first learn about the quantum of action, then you have not heard a word. Let me repeat that. If, I'm going to give you the language he used. If a man does not feel dizzy, when he first learns about the quantum of action, then he has not heard a word. And that's kind of the way I feel about, about Christmas, about the birth of Jesus, the nativity, the incarnation. If when you hear it, you aren't just, your mind isn't blown, and you aren't dizzy, and you aren't saying, but why, wait a minute, what are the implications of this? They change everything, it revolutionizes the world. Then you really don't get it. Um, God rest you, Mary, gentlemen, what comes next? Let nothing you dismay, for unto you is born this day a Savior. I mean, this changes everything. And everything just gets turned topsy-turvy, upside down, right side up. And one of the things it does, this quantum explosion, this... Um, this Bethlehem bombshell, if you will. Well, what changes everything is our attitude towards, one of the things that changes our attitude towards the future. There ought to be no more future friendly, no more people with future ready ambitions than disciples of, of Jesus. We are the carpe manana people, seize tomorrow. And we need the world needs us more than ever because the way to greet the future is not with fear, not with let nothing you just not with dismay. Um, change has changed, and this is why the world needs us so much. Change has changed. Change is no longer like it used to be. Um, the future is not like it used to be because change is now exponential. It is not incremental. It is exponential. 
an exponential means, and like Moore's law, remember? Moore's law, every 18 months. Every 18 months, microprocessing power of computers doubles. Um, and that's been a prediction, and it's been pretty accurate. I, I keep saying it's going to slow down, but it doesn't seem to. But that's exponential change. I mean, um, because 18 months you have a microprocessing power, and 18 months it's twice that. And in 18 months after that, it's four times that. And in 18 months after that, it's 16. I mean, you see where I'm going here? It's exponential change. So things are happening faster than ever before. And so the future, again, is not what it is not what it used to be because things are changing faster than ever. The two most powerful forces in the universe. Number one, the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of prayer. Number two, compound interest. And compound interest is, compound means exponential interest that just happens when money starts making money and exponentially. So I want to help prepare you a little bit um, in the spirit of when everything is moving, the only way you hit a moving target is to get ahead of it. You don't carpe diem this world, which is seize the moment. You carpe manana it. You seize the future. You seize what is coming. Because if you seize the moment, you'll miss it because it's already passed because everything is moving. So let me help you get ahead of it a little bit this year in some, in some special categories. Um, so here are some of, I think, the new words and the new phrases that you're going to need to learn in 2022. Blockchain. Blockchain technology. It's more than about money and finance. The blockchain code guarantees that there can only be ever 21 million bitcoins and that you can't spend the same coin twice, so you ha develop a trust in the currency, but it's more, blockchain is, is really a system of recording information in a way that makes it difficult or impossible to change, hack, or cheat the system. So it's essentially kind of a ledger of transactions that is duplicated and distributed across the entire network of computer systems on the blockchain. So it's decentralized. You're going to hear that word a lot. It's distributed. You've probably already heard that a lot. A lot. And um, these blocks are used to record transactions across many computers um, so that any involved block cannot be, be altered retroactively without changing all subsequent blocks. So it's going to revolutionize. And you will start to see this in 2022. Internet economics is going to help support a creator economy, a create an economy that supports and suckers creativity and imagination and innovation. Um, so the other keywords that come from this is its acronym is DeFi, D E F I, but it's decentralized finance. Other words that are going to be more important than ever, connected, which has always been an important word to anybody in the Wesleyan tradition. We have a connective, connectional system. Hybrid, decentralized everything. Um, and then this Web 3.0. And then something that I admit I don't understand myself, but I've got to spend 2022 learning this thing. It's called non-fungible tokens, NFTs. And non-fungible tokens, NFTs, can be art, it can be music, it can be services. Um, the digital artist Beeple, his real name is Mike Winkleman, but he uh, sold an NFT digital art at Christie's last month for $69 million. Um, this is not something you can take home with you. This is an NFT, non-fungible token. Um, and these NFTs are going to be the building blocks for a whole new web that is going to be forming around us. It's going to radically alter the economics of the web. It's going to redistribute value. It's going to take control away from the giants who are controlling everything now to users. Um, the way Facebook and Twitter and everybody else makes its money is that we provide them content. We don't get paid for the content. This new Web 3.0 will pay people for their content. 
and you're going to start seeing some web-based competition to these social networks like Facebook and Twitter in 2022. And they will share revenue with, um, and Twitter's already starting to see this a little bit. Um, they're trying to experiment with this because they know that they're behind the curve now. But you're going to see Web3-based platforms like Audius, Sound.xyz, Royal, um, you're going to find in 2022, uh, Elon Musk's Neuralink is not only um, going to be make rapid advances, but he, Neuralink is not the only company that's that's using um, uh, brain computer interfaces um, and neural prosthetics. There's synchrons, um, very minimally invasive insertions into the brain via blood vessels in the neck that will probably become public in, uh, in 2022. Quantum computing, uh, which has been talked about for a long time, basically computers that, you, that are on a quantum level, in other words, you can't see them. Um, and they have not been at a commercial level, but they're getting there, there quick. And the other big word, as Facebook has changed its name to Meta, is this metaverse that was coined by Neil Stevenson in his Snow Crash uh, book in 1992, his science fiction novel. Um, I so sensed the significance of this book when it, after it came out, so I have a signed copy of, of Neil Stevenson's uh, Snow Crash. I started teaching my doctoral students in 2007 in a metaverse called Second Life. Uh, I had to give it up after about five years, but you're being seeing that word a lot, meta, metaverse. You will see a 3D printed house in 2022. See if I'm not right about that. You will hear talk about hydrogen powered planes. Now I could go on and on. But when it comes to the future, when it comes to what is coming, fear is not the best strategist. Disdain, dismay is not the best way of of needing it because we are future friendly. We're future focused. Um, we face the future with courage and with confidence, with humility, because we are a people of the future who live Maranatha lives. In other words, we live past, present, and future at the same time. The one who is, the one who was, and what? The one who is to come. One of the public intellectuals, uh, Raymond Tallis, likes to talk about animals, live lives. People lead lives. We lead lives because we don't leave, live in just a moment. We live out of the past, present, future, so we lead. We, we, we actually can prepare and strategize based on uh, reading the signs. Um, but that means more than ever, because of this exponential change, that prior to Reformation, we rediscovered the priesthood of all believers. Um, the moment you are baptized, you are ordained as a priest. We've been learning the last 50 years that the moment you're baptized, you're also commissioned as a missionary. So every one of us has a ministry, the priesthood, and the priesthood em embraces missionhood. So we have a, a ministry and a mission. Now we're understanding that, no, there's also the prophethood of all believers, that all of us uh, all of us have to exercise a prophetic function. And the best way to be prophetic to the future is to be acutely and astutely present to the present. Um, I, I have a, a book, it's down there. Um, I forgot to bring it up here with me. But um, it, it's called... Uh, Ned Palmer's uh, Cheesemonger's History of the British Isles. It came out in 2019. I've been reading it um, this, this Christmas season. And uh, it's, it's an incredible book of hope because at the turn of the 20th century, uh, as we moved into the 21st, uh, Britain was uh, the native British artisanal farm produced cheeses were almost on the verge of extinction. In the last 20 years, one of the most incredible things has happened. And now the artisanal movement has just blown. So now there are over 800 different unique cheeses just in England. 
and our appetizers for yesterday for Christmas were different uh, cheeses from England uh, based on each one of the chapters of his book um, that um, uh, he based the chapter around each one of these these cheeses so I just got each one of those cheeses and we we all we all tried it out. Now, there's an interesting way, a cheesemonger's okay, history of the British Isle. And when you think of that word monger, uh, cheese is not the first thing that goes with it. Um, you know, you've got all sorts of mongerers, and they're not all good. Um, hate mongers, war mongers, whore mongers, fear mongers, greed mongers. But it's time maybe to discover some positive mongering, okay? Some po like cheesemongering. Um, uh, a f so many people like fish, fish mongers. Um, uh, some some people are um, addicted to news, news mongers, which could be good or or bad. But how about? And, and this I got from President Obama, who said, as he used this theme, this meme of hope, that he was a hope mongerer. And that was his basic drumbeat of life. The, the contus formus of his life was he was a hope mongerer. Maybe we need more hope mongering. Maybe that's one of the ways in which we greet the future with hope mongering. With all these changes, all these new words, all these new realities. Some of which are true and some of which are fake. And how do you tell the difference? Um... So, some cheese mongering. Now, to say cheese, do you know why they used to get people to say cheese? Uh, because you notice old pictures, nobody's smiling. Well, they're not smiling because everybody's got bad teeth. You don't have really dentistry until recently. So, nobody wants anybody to see their teeth because they're so dark and missing. And so, people would, you know. But when, uh, when we started getting better teeth, then we had to get people to smile. And so, to get people to smile, you would have them say, cheese cheese and you can't say cheese without opening up your mouth a bit and forming some kind of a a smile so maybe part of cheese mongering and hope mongering is smile mongering um, and what does it mean to bring a smile to 2022 when you were born this is an old meme you were crying, and everybody around you was smiling. Live your life so that when you die, you're the one who is smiling, and everyone around you is, is crying. Um, I love the way one of these big behemoths that Web 3.0 is going to undercut. But if you want to give to charity, you go to smile dot amazon dot com you create your own smile so you can smile on some charity every purchase you make i make i smile on the, my foundation a spirit venture ministries and i just give every purchase that i make gives a contribution or anybody in my family gives a contribution to to spirit venture ministries and it's a smile you can smile on your church you can smile on on your favorite um charities and a smile is a form of letting the light shine in the darkness the light of i mean is there anything more beautiful than than teeth that just shine bright um smile forward smile into the future and smiling and humor go together and and um and i think they both go together the truth because truth is healing and smiling is healing and heal and humor is is healing um, laughter is good medicine. It's a smile. The best way to brighten anyone's day and lighten anyone's load. You know what it is? Smile at them. It gets the fastest response of anything. Just smile at them. The best way to get others to smile? Smile at them. Nothing tingles between the shoulder blades, shivers up the spine, or charges up the spirit as a smile. Share a smile. The world needs your smiles. The future needs your smiles. 2022 needs your smiles. Let nothing you dismay. Don't, when you hear these words and start seeing these changes, don't just respond in fear and dismay. Smile. Go 
hope monger, smile monger, cheese monger. Um, and realize that God is already in this future. And they, this future needs the light and friendliness of your smile as we are in this world, but we are not what? Of this world. We have discernment to know what is a trend and what is truth. So smile. You can smile when you can't say a word. You can smile when you cannot be heard. You can smile when it's cloudy or fair. You can smile any time, anywhere. A little Sunday school ditty that you cannot forget. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus, John 15, 11. I have told you this, the gospel, the good news, that the joy of the Lord, the joy is in Jesus, is in us. And so smile, smile. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God that shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. The British poet Minnie Louise Haskins in this very famous line. But I want to end on this invocation to smile mongering and hope mongering and even cheese mongering where I began last week with my tribute to Howard Thurman and his moods of Christmas. Here is his, um, because now the work of Christmas begins. When the song of the angels is silent, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Smile. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Smile.